an excerpt from my story, the big one, from the collection Muscadine Wine, which is on sale right now, available from MV Media. The road was rough and muddy from a recent rain. Cecil and Uncle Joe jostled about as they rolled over the ruts in the dirt road. They reached the corner of the lake where the brim congregated, and Uncle Frank stopped the truck. Cecil pushed his door wide and jumped out. Slow down, boy, Uncle Frank said. Them fish ain't going nowhere. Cecil ignored his uncle, running until he reached the trunk of a pine tree that had fallen into the lake two years ago. Its submerged canopy created the perfect cover for minnows and the perfect refuge for brim. Cecil opened a box of wigglers, digging into the mulch and pulling out a worm. He baited his hook, then cast it just beyond the submerged branches, hoping he wouldn't get snagged. He sat on the trunk, rested his chin on his hands, and waited. I'm going to be out here in the boat, Uncle Frank called out. Okay, Cecil shouted, his eyes focused on the red and white barber suspended, his, suspending his baited hook just above the limbs where the brim hid. He heard a splash, then looked up to see Uncle Frank settling into the old John boat that no one claimed but everyone used when they wanted to fish in the deep water near the lake dam. He watched Uncle Frank paddle out to the deep end. That's where the big fish lived. Cecil heard a smaller plop. He looked for his barber and it was gone. He grabbed his pole and snatched hard, set in the hook. His rod bent and the tip danced back and forth. I got one, he shouted. I got one. Better reel it in before it gets tangled in them branches, Uncle Frank shouted back. Cecil cranked his Zepco 33 reel as fast as his small hands could manage, but the brim on the end of his line wasn't budging. It held its place for a full minute before slowly coming closer and closer to the bank. Cecil watched the fish zigzag, using his wide body to resist. Cecil kept the pressure on until the brim gave up, laying on its side as he dragged it to the bank. Cecil was careful how he gripped the struggling fish, making sure he had it firmly before taking out the hook. After dropping the brim into his fish basket, he washed his hands in the lake water, drying them on his jeans. He was just about to get another wiggler from the bait box when he heard Uncle Frank holler. Woo-wee, here we go. Uncle Frank was on his knees in the john boat, turning the handle on his spinning reel as fast as he could. His rod bowed, his spool singing as 15-pound test was stripped from the reel. Is it old hoss? Cecil shouted. Yes, sir, Uncle Frank shouted back. Uncle Frank reeled and reeled, but old hoss didn't budge. Come on up here, Miss Hogg, he said. You know you tired. As if on cue, Uncle Frank's line fell slack. God damn it, she broke the line. Uncle Frank slammed his rod and reel on the bottom of the john boat. He was in the middle of a cussing fit when his line jerked. His eyes lit up and he snatched the tackle off the bottom of the boat and began reeling again. Oh, you trying to be slick, he said, swimming to the boat and trying to get me all tangled up. That ain't happening. Old Hoss was fast, but Uncle Frank was faster. He took up all the slack line and was putting the pressure on the fish again. I got you now, he said. I know I got you. Uncle Frank's line went tight and snapped with a sound like a broken guitar string. His rod straightened and Uncle Frank stood frozen, staring at the water. She's gone? Cecil asked. Uncle Frank glared at Cecil. He opened his mouth to answer, but something bumped the boat. What the hell? A fin rose from under the water behind Uncle Frank. It was huge bigger than the shark fin Cecil had seen on National Geographic's. But it wasn't a shark, fi shark fin. It resembled a bass dorsal fin, a huge spiked fin. The fin streaked toward the boat. Uncle Frank, look out! Uncle Frank looked puzzled until he saw the big fin coming at him like a torpedo. Oh, hell no! The huge fish rammed the John boat. Uncle Frank pitched back, falling into the lake as the boat flipped on top of him. Cecil ran back and forth, helpless. Uncle Frank! Uncle Frank! He yelled. Uncle Frank's head broke the water surface, his eyes wide with fear. He swam for the bank, his thick arms flailed in the water. Cecil watched him come closer, then saw the fin appear behind his uncle. Swim faster! Swim, Uncle Frank! Swim faster! Uncle Frank's eyes narrowed, his arms moving faster, his legs kicking behind him. The fin disappeared replaced by the head and open maw of the largest bass Cecil had seen in his life. Uncle Frank! 
The fish mouth hovered over Uncle Frank for a second, then smashed against the surface. Uncle Frank disappeared in an explosion of water. Cecil fell back in shock. The water settled, small ripples undulated into the shore. Cecil stared where he last saw Uncle Frank, then scanned the entire lake, refusing to accept what he'd just seen. Uncle Frank? Uncle Frank! And that was an excerpt from the big one, from the Muscadine, Muscadine Wine Short Story Collection. On sale now at MV Media. Go get you a copy and read the rest of the story. Take care. Peace.